welcome! So we are going to be making sock stick puppets, which is a different sort of sock puppet than what most people are used to. Um, a lot of people would expect, uh, these are my puppets from last year I did with Figment, I did uh, dragons. And a lot of people are used to sort of uh, hand and mouth sock puppets, uh, like this character. But what we're going to be doing is more of a rod puppet and then you'll have the option of adding arms and details. You could even put legs on the bottom of it, but it's mainly going to be operated by stick and that's how you'll control the puppet. So they're a really easy puppet to build, easy puppet to use, uh, a fun puppet if you want to have like some interaction between a, a couple of puppets. You could make multiple puppets and have, have some adventures going on with them. They're also fun to spin around. And uh, I don't know if, uh, if anybody has bells. I've got a jar of bells here. And I just had the idea I could put bells on them and then they would be fun for, for, for making noises too. So they're also nice to display. You just sort of jam them into, into places. If you had like a potted plant or something, you, you, could, uh, you could stick a little character uh, just as a display piece. So, uh, I'm going to get us started right away, pretty much. Oh, here, I'll, I'll give a really quick demonstration of, of uh, if you want to do rods. So I've got one stick for the body, and then I've got two sticks, or I could just have one stick for the rod, for the hand. But you can have a hand for waving to people. Hello, hello. Or you could have two hands and then do like a little, little dancing with them, which is fun. And uh, yeah, so they're pretty easy to manipulate types of puppets because they're so nice and simple. There she was. So uh, you will need a stick, and as I recommended, you could use uh, 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 shish kebab skewers. That's what most of my guys are. If you've got uh, chopsticks, if you've got just a wooden dowel of some sort, I'm going to make two puppets while I'm talking to you. Uh, I'm going to make one that's really simple, like my cat here. Just super, super basic. So if you've never made a puppet before, if you're not quite sure where to go with it, go simple. Uh, if you've made puppets before, you can get a little more complicated with, with uh, different styles of arms and ears and, and, and whatnot. Uh, I'm going to make one of each. And I've decided because I was feeling a little holiday spirity, I'm gonna make a reindeer, so that's gonna be my fancy one. And for my simple one, I, I think I'll just do a person. So I'm gonna get two skewers. I'm looking for a nicer quality skewer. That's a good one. I'm gonna chop the sharp pointy end off, even though that's gonna be inside my puppet. I just, I don't need it there. In fact, you could even put, if you're really, uh, worried about pointy bits, you could even put a bit of tape. Oh, this is another thing. I don't know if this was on my materials list, uh, but uh, I didn't mention earlier, masking tape is dandy. You could even put like a little masking tape on the top of it. And I'm going to show the two techniques for making the head of your puppet now. One way of making a head is to take your toilet paper tube. These are very handy. I'm sure every household might have one or two of these kicking around. You want to cut it in half. And what I like to do is I like to insert the one half into the other half. You don't have to, it just makes it a little bit firmer. So there's one inside the other. And then I can put my stick between those two pieces. And there is the head of my puppet. I could now put the sock over that and start decorating immediately and that would be like the simplest thing to do but I am going to add uh, you could add some glue oh if anybody's using hot glue now is the time to plug it in and I forgot to plug my hot glue in although I and I would like to use it because it's faster for me so please hold one minute uh, I'll, sh I'll show the other head and then everybody can be putting their heads together while I plug in my hot glue uh, the other head type, so one head is, you will get a sort of a cylindrical 
marshmallow. You know those big camping marshmallow? Marshmallow shaped heads. You can actually see uh, that lady back there sort of looks a bit like a marshmallow. But the other option is to take some paper and maybe, maybe I'll just kind of tear it. It's gonna make a big noise. And wad that up into a ball. And then put that onto your stick. Maybe I'll squish it around the end of my stick. And you could put a little bit of tape around that to hold it in shape. Or when you put the sock over it, the sock will hold it in shape. So, so you don't even need tape or glue. But I am going to plug my hot glue in right now, just so it's warm enough by the time we get to that point. My apologies, I meant to do this already. When I get to the hot glue, I will give some hot glue safety tips there as well. Make sure you're, if you plug in your hot glue, it's in a nice safe spot where once it gets hot, it's not going to touch any of your work stuff. You're not going to bump it with your elbow or anything like that. So, uh, let's see. So I've got the beginnings of two puppets. I'm going to add a little bit of taste just to make sure if I had the if I had the hot glue gun warm already I'd probably do it I'd just squirt a little hot glue in there and then stick that together careful not to burn myself but for the now I'm just using the tape so I put a little bit of tape over the top and I'm just taping the uh, the two the inside and outside pieces together and now I'm going to put a little bit of tape at the bottom, so it's on the toilet paper tube, on the construction paperness of the tube there, and then I'm wrapping it around the stick. So that'll just keep everything in place. So there's the start of that puppet. I'm. This is a trick with tape. You can make long skinny pieces by just tearing the tape down the middle. And I'm just going to attach this, attaching it to the stick. And I'm not going to be too worried about holding it all together because when I put the sock on, it's going to do that. But this is my fancier creature. I'm going to put a little bit of a nose on it. So I'm going to add a little bit of additional paper. And again, I could hold it all together with the socks, but then it might move around later, so I'm going to use some masking tape. Uh, you can use scotch tape, you can use duct tape. I can't think of other types of tape, but I'm sure they exist. I recommend masking tape. Masking tape is quite easy to use. And if you need to use scissors to cut the tape, that, that's okay too. Yeah. So you can sort of see, and it's it's really, really wrinkly, but you can sort of see I've got sort of a longer nose shape there. This is going to be, I'll hold it over here in front of the dark. This is going to be my deer's face. So this is kind of the skeleton inside. Now I'm going to use, uh, let's see what have I got. I'm going to use this Terrible, terrible old sock, and look, it's got a big hole in the heel. I am not worried about that. In fact, I'm going to cut this sock in half. I'm going to use my scissors, and I'm going to cut it right where that hole is, so that I've got sort of a the, the foot and toe of the sock. Let me move my papers out of the way, and you can see my, work, my little workstation here. I'm just laying the sock flat. The heel tends to stick up a little bit, so I'm just going to fold that heel out of the way. If you are using a smaller sock, you may wish to just use the entire sock the way it is. If you are using a great big huge sock, and this, this one is a pretty big sock, you may wish to do what I'm doing and cut the sock in half.
laid it flat. Eh, it's not, you know, it's not a perfect edge, but that's okay. This is gonna be the bottom of my puppet. And actually, I'm going to cover it up. I'm going to use this part of the sock for my body. So I'm just gonna cut this whole naughty, holy, messy bit right out of there. This is going to go over that shape I've created. And you'll see there's a little seam that's the toe of the sock. You may want to move the sock around. I'm holding the, the newspaper inside with my hand just so it doesn't get too unraveled in there. But you may want to move the sock around a bit so that it looks okay. That looks a little wrinkly. Let's try the seam at the front. That was with the seam at the back. Oh, I just had a realization. <gasps> My sock is fuzzy on this side. It's very smooth on this side, but it's fuzzy on this side. And I'm making a deer. Who says a deer shouldn't be fuzzy? Aha. All right, I've just turned my sock inside out. This is part of the fun of making puppets like this, is uh, you get ideas as you're making it. And you know what? The sock is a bit bigger than the head, so I'm going to add a bit of stuffing to the head. Too small. I'm going to make it bigger. And I get a bit more of my, my paper. This is an old magazine I'm using. Pumping it up so that the paper is softer. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to wrap it around there. This is squishing, squishing. It had a pointy nose. I just smooshed that in. Smooshing. And I could put some more tape around this to hold its shape. Yeah, I think I will. I, you don't have to make your tape pieces skinnier. I just do that. It's, I think it makes it a little bit easier to work with. Back. There we go. So again, I'm not too. So that's that's a bigger shape, which I think will fit better in my bigger sock. How is everybody doing? Is everybody getting started and and uh, chopping up socks now? Uh, if you want, uh, you can do a thumbs up or uh, or just uh, make comments in the. Uh, in the chat if you have if you're uh, excited about the creature that you're going to make or the character you're going to make because maybe your character will be a person but maybe they'll be I don't know a fireman or a wizard or a magical fairy just to let everyone know I have uh, uh allowed uh, users to now unmute themselves and we'll see how that goes for a bit uh yeah everyone on your best behavior that's right <laughs> please <laughs> so i've got the shape i have pulled the sock tight over it there's a couple wrinkles at the bottom and i'm i'm pinching it with my hand now and here is where you will use your garbage bag twist tie or pipe cleaner or piece of yarn or piece of string or bit of wire, whatever you've got, we're going to just tie that so that that's attached to that stick. And basically, you could put two dots on it and be finished. That would be like the simplest puppet. I'm definitely going to make this bit more decorated. And I am making sort of a, a I'm going to go with a Christmassy sort of a character, a holiday themed puppet. So I'm going to wrap green pipe cleaner 
the colors you use for any of this, go nuts, have fun, be rainbow, be crazy. Color, I mean, you can go really basic. You don't have to be colorful with your puppet. This guy here, black and yellow, that's the only colors on that entire puppet. So I've twisted, I've gone around a couple of times with the pipe cleaner. I've made a little twist and I'm going to use I happen to have uh, wire cutters. If you don't have wire cutters, you can use your scissors, but I'll warn you, if you're using scissors to cut pipe cleaners, it will dull your scissors over time. Do not use your good fabric scissors on pipe cleaner. I have brought my fabric scissors out only for the cutting of fabric. But uh, yeah, if you, if, you, if you do a lot of work with uh, pipe cleaners and wires, a handy pair of uh, wire clippers and needle nose pliers, one of my favorite puppet making tools. So there, there is the start of my reindeer. And I'm going to take this longer tube and I'm going to have my reindeer wear this. So actually, I could have used the same pipe cleaner to attach uh, this part as well. You know what? I might do that because I can, I can easily untwist this and attach this. And here's another thing I can do. I can open up the body and put this layer underneath. Oops. I can also drop it on the floor. Whoop. Yeah. I. I because I like pick the fuzzy sock so much. I'm going to put this part under like that, and I'm just going to wrinkle it up at the top of it, and then this part over like that, pulling that tight again, and I'm going to make sure that the two socks are overlapping. So some of my characters, like this character here, he's doing it, where he's got, uh, if I pick up his little skirt a little bit, this is the leg of the sock underneath and pointing with my thumb and this is this the, the main sock over top but then some of them in this one's case it the toe of the sock is gray i'll hold it closer to the camera the toe of the sock is gray and then this was the leg of the sock happened to be a different color or you could use a totally different sock that's what i'm going to do with my second puppet that i'm going to work on so you could have the head be one color and the body as kind of like a dress like a little outfit uh, be a different color and in this case I've just used yarn so I tied the head on first and then tied this part over top so that is a choice depending on the colors of your sock if you want to use multiple socks so my other puppet that I'm going to start next is going to have this color of head and this color of dress which I think will be very fun and I'm sort of thinking I might make it like a little a little witchy character or maybe maybe a little sort of uh, I don't know, a little fantastical person or who knows. I'll find out who it is as I do. So I'm putting the I'm just using the same pipe cleaner again. Put that back on there. There is my deer puppet so far. So he's got like a little, sort of a little top and a little skirt. Or maybe those are pants, I don't know. And it's a little lumpy, but once I start decorating it, it's gonna look pretty amazing. So where did my other puppet character go? So Robin. Yes? Uh, hi, if we, we, we're gonna try to make something kind of like that black cat you've got there. Um, so can I put my body sock over the bottom of the head? Is that what you did instead of under? So this, How, this part yeah. here, it's, it's, uh, this is the leg part of the sock. Yeah. And I, in this case, I put it underneath and then I just, this okay. is the toe of the sock over top. Okay. I think that's probably the easiest way to do it because then you don't get a little wrinkle around the neckline. Ah, I think, I think that I cut the toe too short. Let me see if I can. <laughs> 
fake it a bit. I'll no, just sort maybe, of tuck into the Maybe it's here. a small cat. Maybe it's, maybe it's a little cat. kitty kitty with a big head. Okay, thank you. And that's the other thing too, is the proportions of the, of the creature. You can play with them as we go. I see somebody in the chat just said, I now have hot glue in my hair. Please make sure that your hot glue is safely away from you. I, uh, I'll, I'll show you. I keep mine uh, in a tin can and the tin can has rocks in it. I, I do that because it doesn't have its little metal. Uh, hot glues often have like a little stand and then you can sort of stand them up. But you can see I've got an area. This is a this is just an old cereal box. And then this is my can of rocks and you can see it's got glue all around the edge of it. And then I park my hot glue in there and I keep it over there. And then that way, like, I'm not gonna, like, my elbow is nowhere near it. When I'm, I'm a big hand tosser, I'm not gonna bump it. Uh, so yes, please, please uh, be safe with the, uh, with your tools and with your, with your equipment and stuff. So, so, uh, uh, Mary, I, I hope, I hope your hair is okay. I'm a retired florist and I should know better, but that is a brilliant idea. I, well, I, I, I normally, like, I'll leave the hot glue like that normally. And that's okay. That's that's good. But then I would find that that little tip is exposed, and I'm I'm a bit of an overcautious person. Um, and this actually, this your hot your your glue lasts longer this way because it's not gravity's not slow slowly oozing it out the tip if you if you just leave it on its side. But it's also here I might bump the cord. Here it's got the weight of the rock, so if I bump the cord, it's it's safer. <laughs> It's more. Where is your box of band aids that I know I'm going to need before we're done? I don't have one, uh, but I also have very calloused hands from doing a lot of hot gluing. Here is a tip from a friend of mine. I don't do this, um, it's not on my table, but I will recommend it. If you are somebody who does burn yourself with the hot glue periodically, have a bowl of lukewarm water. You don't want cold water because that will shock your system. You want lukewarm or even mildly warm, like it, it, it just room temperature is fine. If you burn yourself, dip, dip your hand in the water right away. And then that'll soothe the burn right away. So I have a friend who, uh, anytime he works with hot glue, he's got a special like weighted bowl. You know, the, the way I've got the rocks in the bottom of this, he's got a bowl that won't tip. He's got that over in the hot glue gun station so that he can glue and take care of boo-boos should they occur. I shall fill my bowl with my salty tears. <laughs> Ooh, salt. Uh, you know what? That helps in healing, doesn't it? <laughs> Don't know. Do not take medical advice from me. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do, I'm going to do my second uh, cylindrical head character. You can also make these heads bigger by having the toilet paper base and then wrap paper around that. He's actually, he's made that way. So he's got, he's got the toilet paper tube in there and then he's got a piece of uh, just construction paper squished and wrapped around the head. If you want softer edges, scrunch up that paper more before you use it. Really give it a good working. And then un- crumple it and then re-crumple it on your puppet. Uh, if you don't mind if it's got some lumps, sometimes the lumps make good shapes. This character, he's got like a little bit of a, he's got a bit of a chin and a little bit of jowls on him because of the way the paper wrinkled around the face. And, and I kind of like that. It gives, it gives him a bit more character. I am going to use my fabric scissors on my socks because they will cut a nicer edge. Now in this case, I'm going to have the head of my puppet be the white sock. So this part here, I don't need it. I'll come back and make something else out of that later. I also do the art making technique of letting many things fall on the floor and then doing a nice clean up at the end. So I've flattened my sock. I've got the heel. There's, there's the heel of the sock. I don't want the heel, so I'm just gonna fold that upwards. And then I'm cutting straight across. 
This one's easy. It's got stripes so I can see where it is. This part here, I... Ooh, I just had a thought. I might make a hat out of this. Uh, this would be kind of fun. I could make... Uh, I could get my sew. This is uh, I've described this as a no sew puppet, so so you don't need to do any sewing, but you can do sewing. There's nothing to say that you shouldn't uh, if you want to. And I could sew a, a diagonal angle and have a cone to become a hat for my character. So I might get my sewing machine out and do that. I could also hand sew it. You could also glue the edges to so like cut it into that shape and then glue the edges if you really hate sewing. This is going to be the dress of my character. There's the head of my character. Now this sock, pardon me, this sock has a very um, thin part, so that's going to be the back. And then the uh, top of the sock, that's going to be the front. So there is, and there's a wrinkle, so I'm just going to move all the wrinkles to the back of my shape here. If you're worried about the toilet paper roll getting squished, you could ball up some uh, newspaper or construction paper and stick it inside of the toilet paper roll, and that would give it shape. Uh, but I haven't done that with any of these other guys, and it's held up fairly well. I would say if you're going to be vigorously playing with the puppet. Uh, maybe add a little fortification on the inside, but otherwise I wouldn't worry about it. Now in this case, I am using a bright green pipe cleaner for the collar here, but I'm going to cover that up right away with the, with the character's dress. Which is black. What am I going to attach that with? I've got different colors of pipe cleaner I could use. So I've just pulled this sock up over the body. Here's another trick. Let's say you don't want your puppet to be really skinny. I could take some more uh, of this and I could put this inside my puppet just to give its body a bit more dimension. I think I might do that with this one. And I might. Uh, I might want to keep the cylindrical shape so that they've got a bit of shoulder, or I might want to scrunch the top so that it's a bit more curved down from the neck area. I'll, I'll put the dress on and then I'll put the, the stuffing on the inside, see what I like. And this character is going to use, I'm going to find a dark pipe cleaner something out here. Nope. Are people making people or are people making animals or do you have a mix? Oh, uh, 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 Weber's has a tip. For, forgive me if I'm saying your name wrong, Weber's. Uh, has a tip, uh, dip your hand in the water first, and then you don't get affected by the blue. If you do burn yourself a lot with the hot glue, you can also buy low temperature hot glue. You can also use white glue or, you know, regular school glue, but if you're using this kind of glue, it's very slow to dry. <gasps> Clownfish with a sun hat. Oh my goodness, I'm looking so forward to seeing things like that. Yes, we will have a big show off at the end where everybody can show and tell what they're working on. So there's my character so far. And yeah, I, I, I don't want this character to be too skinny. I'm gonna I'm gonna fatten them up a bit. So I'm just going to raise up their skirt a little bit. And I'm going to insert this uh, toilet paper tube. And then I think, well, let's see how it looks if I don't do anything. And I can hold this in two ways. One is I can tie up the bottom so that it doesn't fall out. There we go. There's their body. Or uh, I can 
open this up again and I can put some tape there and then that way I can just let that hang loose. I, I, I kind of want this to look like, like a little dress. So I'm going to tape, actually holding in there fairly well on its own, but uh, I'm going to uh, tape that out. I also realized the bottom of my skewer is also quite pointy. So I'm going to put a little extra tape at the bottom of it, just because, I don't know, I just want it to feel nicer in my hand. Something important with puppets is to make sure it's comfortable to play with. If you've got a puppet that's very, very awkward, there's probably ways to make it more comfortable. There, I just put a little, a little tip on the, on the stick to make it hold nicer. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shape the shoulders a little bit of my character. That's the animal, but not decided what type of creature it will be. That's the fun too, is just starting with no particular idea of who this is gonna be, and then letting it tell you as it goes. Tape. Sorry, I'm doing this down in my lap where you can't see anything. There, because I don't want this character to have great big shoulders. So what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm pinching the side together and I'm folding it back. And on this side, I've already put a piece of tape there. Both sides. And then I've got sort of a pointy corner there, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna squish that there. I've squished that pointy corner and I'm gonna do the same on this side now. So you can see not squished yet, squished. Squish. Oh, and I like to do sound effects. Feel free to make lots of sound effects as you are making these. You guys are muted, so you you won't be embarrassed whatever sound effects you like as you squish and tear and, and smoosh all the things together. You should definitely have fun as you are making the puppet, which will encourage you to have fun with the puppet when it's made. So see, I got like a little paper dress now. And, and it's actually, it's not, it's not taped up here, but it's being held on because the the white sock is holding it in place. I could put a little more tape around there just to make sure it doesn't fall out. A little additional tape, and I'm now I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my hand there just in case I accidentally push it down. Yeah, there she is. So there's my little my little character wearing a little a little dress. And now I'm going to put arms on this character. Um, at this point, once once you've got this, there's your basic puppet, and you can literally take your markers, which are over there. I'm going to run and grab my markers in a second. But you could literally take your markers, draw a face on there, and you're done. You could stick a little hat on it. You can stick hair on it. There. Oh, look at that, it's a puppet. I could do two dots and I'm done. So these can be as simple as you like. I'll show you some examples and then I'm gonna run and get my markers. So I've made her, she's got, uh, I've made her with a, a, a fancier face so you can see she's got, here out of the way, uh, she's actually got little pigtails. This is embroidery floss, uh, embroidery thread that her hair is made out of. I've got a little bow holding in the back, but it's not actually glued on there at all. There's the wrinkles at the back of the sock. So this was actually a fairly big sock. And, uh, and she's attached, the hair is attached by making two little holes, tiny holes, teeny, teeny, tiny holes. And I had a piece of pipe cleaner and I went through one hole, out the other hole, and then laid the hair on top of that and twisted the pipe cleaner around the hair. So I'll make a really basic model of that. So, so let's say this is the hair 
So you go through the two holes, put in the hair, and twist the pipe cleaner. If you don't want the pipe cleaner seen, choose a pipe cleaner that is the same color as the hair, if you have that option. Or you can see, uh, you can see her, there's her pipe cleaner. It's yellow. So I chose a yellow pipe cleaner to go with her pink and orange hair. Uh, you can then give them a haircut. But that one little pipe cleaner there in the top of her head is holding all this hair onto her head. And then I've I've got little pipe cleaners in the hair as her little uh, as her little ponytail. And then because her ponytails were sliding around to the front of her face, that's why I have a little extra bow just holding the two ponytails together at the back so that they don't so that they don't go silly all over her face. So there's an example of drawing a face in. And you can get as detailed as you want or as simple as you want. I'll show you a couple more drawn faces. So this character here, oops, this was a white sock, so I was able to add some color. I felt like she needed a little something on her forehead. So she's got, she's, I actually colored under the hair as well. So she's the same thing again. She's got, there's the pipe cleaner that is, can you use a pipe cleaner or a yarn? No, it's pipe cleaner. You could use yarn as well. It's one pipe cleaner holding all the hair on. And the hair is, that's the embroidery floss just out of the, I didn't even un unravel it. I just put it on the way it is. And, and I think it's quite pretty. And she's got a little bit of makeup on her face and she's got a little nose. You could start gluing the face together too. So here's, here's an example of, of I, didn't, I don't have a full face on this guy, but his eyes are pom-poms. And what I did was I, color, I, I, I did two little dots to know where the placement of the eyes was gonna be. And then I colored big, that's actually purple, it's hard to see on the camera, but big purple circles, and then glued, using the hot glue, glued the, the uh, eyeballs right on top of there. And then I stopped because I thought, you know what, you know, he's, I just, I love this sort of crazy staring expression. He didn't need more than that. So, and I think he's a gargoyle. Um, I'll get to arms in a minute and I'll show you how he's got pipe cleaners in his arms. So he's actually got posable arms. Or you can do the stick arms. We'll get to those in a, in a moment. Uh, let's see the cat. The cat has these are this is fun foam. Fun foam is a lovely material if you if you have that. It's uh, it's like a squishy plastic in cards. You buy it at art stores, um, and uh, yeah, I've got a box of it now. This this is actually this is my box of fun foam over here, and it's entirely full of scraps. You could also use stickers. If you have stickers, uh, you could, uh, or, or sticky paper, you could draw on the sticky paper and then stick that on. Uh, and then this is marker in the middle. So, so the, the pupil in his eye and the pupil in her eye, that's marker. So I think this one, I think I'm, I'm going to draw the face on, but I might make a little pom-pom nose in the middle, just so that it's got a little more 3D. So I've got a, a bin of pom-poms over here. I might go through my pom-poms and see what I've got. You could use a wooden bead for the nose. Uh, you could also, if, if you're not yet at this stage, remember when I was building up this nose for my ear, you could also have put something inside of the sock before putting the head on. This is for future puppets if you're not, you know, if you're already past that stage. You could have a 3D nose that is covered by this sock the way this big schnoz is covered by that sock. So yeah, I'm going to grab my markers. So uh, work away. I'm going to grab my markers. Which are literally right here. I have my markers sorted into my dry markers and my good markers. And remember to hydrate, have a, have a tea break or whatever beverage you are drinking.
I know there's a wine aficionado out there. Maybe a little early. So I'm going to do arms now. And I think for my deer, I'm going to do arms like, this is Gordon over here. I'm going to do arms like Gordon has with a little pipe cleaner in it. And I think for this character, I'm going to do arms like she has with a, with a stick to control the arms. So I have to find a material and I've got over here, I've got all kinds of fabric. I've got, um, I've got felt. Uh, felt is probably the easiest. I could also make the, the arms out of pipe cleaner. So I could attach the pipe cleaner and have like, ooh, actually, you know what? I kind of like that. Then I can make the arms stripey. I'm making pipe cleaner arms, ho, ho, ho. If you're using fabric, you'll want to cut a strip of the fabric. And if you want to do a different color of hand from the arm, you'll have to cut out hands with a bit of a wrist. Make sure you, you have a bit of a wrist on the hand that you're going to make so, so that you have the wrist to attach to the end of the arm and we will use pipe cleaner or thread to tie the hand to the arm to the stick if you're putting a stick. You can also make it all one piece. So this character's arm, that's just all one piece. So it's a rectangle, long skinny rectangle, and there's the hand cut out at the end. This puppet and this character over here, you can see her arms. They both have, it's just, that's just a red, rectangle a rectangle and then you just draw the hand at the end and cut that out that's the easiest one again if you have made a puppet before you know have some fun with it if you, if you feel that your skills are up to it go as far with it as you want if this is your first puppet uh, that you're ever making or the first time that you're making this type of thing I'm gonna recommend keep the first one simple and then and then go fun with the second one. You know, you can keep the first one simple and then the second one can be more fancy and then the third one can be really fancy. So, you know, uh, don't try anything too challenging right away, unless you wanna, there's no rules here. So, you know what, I'm, I'm recommending, but it's just a recommendation. You can, you can be crazy if you want. You could, you could put, you could make this thing be an alien with 12 arms if you want. Uh, really, the sky's the limit. And you know what? I, I just mentioned an alien, so like outer space. Outer space is the limit, right? Boom, I'm naming him George. All right, George. Let's see, so I've got a black, I've got a black and, 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 uh, and uh, purple stripey body. I'm gonna do stripey arm. See what colors I've got. I've got, uh, I've got blue, I've got yellow. Oh, I kind of like the yellow against the purple. I've got some contrast. This is my my feeble attempt at keeping my workstation tidy. Okay, so I'm going to twist these together so that I have a spiral arm. Uh, if you are doing the rectangle arms, you will still need a pipe cleaner or piece of string uh, to tie oops, the arms on. And I'll show you with this guy. They're tied on at the shoulder there. So it's it, this is a this is a piece of yarn, and it's literally folded over the yarn and tied on. Uh, in her case. Her face, I'll show you. It's literally, there is the end of the rectangle. There is a red pipe cleaner holding that on. So this, this arm literally goes up to the shoulder, it's folded over that pipe cleaner, and, and then just trimmed. I'll show you her armpits, and just trimmed, there's the end of it. Now, the challenge with this kind of arm is if I gave that a sharp tug 
I could pull her arm off. So you may want to add a little glue. You could glue this piece to the underside of the arm. You could glue it if you have glue. If you are someone who sews, you could sew these on, and, and that would be that would be A, classier, and B, look really tight, tidy. And an advantage of sewing is if you make a mistake, you can pull the thread out and do it again. With glue, not so much so. With glue, you're, you're kind of stuck with what you got. But that's okay, because these puppets don't have to be perfect. If one arm is a little crooked from the other arm, hey, that's the way that puppet is. That's part of the character. There we go. So back to my twining of this. Now my deer is kind of a gray color, so I probably want to use something that is that color for my arm. I've got a bit of, uh, this is, uh, uh, it's the kind of material that sweatshirts are made of. So I've got a chunk of that, so I think that's gonna, I'm gonna make my ears on that, that. And I'm thinking that I want this to be like a little witchy character, but she might be like a little gnome. And I'm saying she, it may not be a she by the end of it, who knows? There we go. There it is, my arms. And one of the advantages of using a pipe cleaner for this is I can just use the one pipe cleaner for both arms. So I am literally going to, let's see, I'm going to attach it at the back. Yeah, I don't, I, I feel like I don't want the arm color in front. I want the arm color behind. So I'm going to get a bit more of the yarn that I tied the neck on with, and I'm going to tie my arms on with that. So I would say I used a dark blue. Get a bit more of this. Pull some out. There we go. I've got some dark blue. This is uh, pipe cleaners that were previously other things. So reduce, reuse, recycle. How are we feeling about turning cameras on? Does anybody want to show off their progress this far? I think we could probably open it up and uh, let folks, if anybody wants to show off what they're doing, or if anyone has any questions about, I don't know, ideas, they're not really sure what direction to take their character in, you're welcome to show that off to the group, show us what you've got, and then maybe we could sort of have uh, you know, suggestions from the group on things you can do for your puppets. And you know what, because these puppets are easy, we might even have a couple people finished already. I, I don't think anybody's posted yet that they're finished. But uh, if you are finished, you could start your second puppet or, let's see, yeah, we got, we got time, or you can uh, make props for your puppet, costume ideas for your puppet. Weavers, would you like to show off your puppet? I'm making, oh, making a tiny one. Figment, uh, did you want to show anything off? I see you are highlighted now. Oh, that's a mistake. I took off the uh, spotlighting off of yours. <laughs> but if anyone wants to uh, uh, show uh, what they've done so far, I have uh, allowed that to start your own video and it should by default uh, switch over to you. Yeah, try, try the camera now, because we did have the setting so that you couldn't turn your camera on, but you should be able to turn it on now. Yeah. So I've added, I'm just going to hold that up to the, up to the uh, thing. I've added the, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, a pipe cleaner around the back to hold my arms on. So there's my arms. And I will be able, the pipe cleaner is, is uh, 
is a bendy, flexible enough material that I will be able to uh, manipulate those hands with a rod. But I can also pose them and just have them free form. And I don't even need rods on them. So pipe cleaners are a pretty awesome material. Um, I've made like a little X over the back. Again, if I gave this a sharp tug, I could probably pull it out of there, but I'm not going to give it a sharp tug, so the arms should stay attached forever and ever. Clipping off the, the little ends. Anything that's really tiny, I do throw it in the garbage, but anything that's of a bit of a length, I will save that. I put it back in my little pipe cleaner collection, and I will save that, and that can become things like the little details in her hair. Um, you can also make a little ball out of the, the pipe cleaners. If you don't have a pom-pom, you can roll the pipe cleaner into a little ball. Instant pom-pom. Pigment is still spotlighted for me. I'm probably highlighted for everybody else, though, because I'm talking. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You, I can't, uh, I, I don't see myself if I'm the speaker, weirdly. <laughs> All right, so this, this character is going to need some hands. So I could make hands out of pipe cleaners. I could, this is going to sound funny, but like, let's say I was making them a robot monster. I could, I could cut out some forks and have like fork fingers. We can't turn on mic or camera. Is it enabled? Um, Figment, can you check? Both are enabled, in fact, yeah. Yeah. So we should be able to, if you are still having trouble, put it in the chat, not for us. So, so uh, can you check uh, Alex's camera and see if uh, it says host is not allowing. So it's, it's uh, not enabled for everyone. Any luck there? Oh, everybody's muted now. Yeah, I don't know why. Um, Alex, if you want to try showing your... Uh, I have the uh, settings so everyone can... Oh, there we go. There we go. I am so sorry. Hi, Alex. <laughs> Hello. So uh, my kids have kind of wafted away and this has become all about me now. But so I accidentally invented a technique I'm sure I didn't invent where the sock I put over top was way too baggy. And so I sort of cut the top and I was like, well, let's make it into kind of a cowl. And then I glued around. And so oh, what I was going to be a dog has turned into some sort of Christmas alien. Anyway, that's the little thing you go around here. Um, and then the other one is a cat, but I found this yellow letter O, so I'm like, well, I'm just going to do that, and then maybe put these orange leaves as kind of like other weird face parts. So anyway, things get weird around here all the time. We like I aliens. I love it. So that's, that's where we're at. <laughs> I With love some the cowl. Input. Yeah, is that a thing? I'm worried it'll rip off at some point, but I, I could always re-glue it, I suppose. It, yeah, it should it should be fine, and you've glued it, so it like it, it's not going to slip off. Yeah, I don't have um, hot glue, uh, but I Elmer glued it around, and if, I'm yeah. thinking of getting a hot glue gun because I, I need one, and then I'll fix it if I need to. The Elmer glue will keep things together if yeah. you've used enough. Yes. Uh, so just make sure that it sort of soaks through the yeah. two fabrics a bit. The two layers. Okay, and re, and yeah. then give it enough time. So it's probably like a little tacky still. Uh, but yeah. I recommend with any of those glues, uh, before before uh, performance or rough play with it, um, give it a whole night to dry. Okay, well, we might have some rough play around here, so I'm going <laughs> to give it time to dry. In which case, it might come <coughs> off, but you can just glue it back on again. <coughs> Or these might go on the Christmas tree. We'll see. Oh, nice. Ooh, these could be a tree. Pot. Yeah, they could be. I'm going to turn my camera off because my battery's dying. But anyway, I just wanted to show you what, we're, what we've got. Thank you, Alex. <laughs> That's fabulous. That character actually reminded me a tiny bit of No Face from uh, Spirited Away. 
I think it was it's sort of the hood and the round white face. Another option might be to cut out of fabric a round white face and then stick that onto your um, uh, onto your. Can, can you guys highlight me again? I wonder if I can. Oh wait, I gotta remove. There we go. All right, I'm good. So that I can see myself. I'm making my my reindeer's legs now, and I'm using this this fabric, this nice jersey fabric. If you are using fabric like this, you can use pretty much anything, but some fabrics will fray. So if you can pull strings off the edges, that won't be a great um, that won't be a great fabric to make the arms out of. This is why I'll recommend felt or something that is tightly woven like this. Like this will not fray. This will not come apart. So now I have to choose the length of my arms. I got the two pieces together here, one, two, and I'm going to put them up at the neck of my puppet and decide how long do I want the arms to be. And I think, I think maybe I'll go there and I'm going to color the, I'm, the, the hoof is going to be part of the same fabric. I'll just color it in. So they are both the same length now. Get some more. Actually, I've got gray, red. So I've got the green to be the collar of my character. And actually, I'm going to add a bit of a bit of a larger collar on, and I'm going to put some bells around it. So this is like a uh, a reindeer who pulls a sleigh kind of a reindeer. But I've got some gray yarn, gray uh, thread, string. What's this called? Yarn. It's called yarn. And I'm going to use the yarn to tie the the arms on. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up with the arms, up over the head, so that the string is under the arms. So, 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 so he's got his arms up over his head. And now I'm going to do a couple wraps of this. And I'm holding it with one hand. So I'm holding kind of the armpits, the armpits of my, of my character. And I'm going to hold the string there with my finger. And then I'm going to go wrap around one, two, three, doesn't matter how many times, but at least a couple of times, and tie a knot. I'm gonna tie the knot at the back, but if this was uh, like a like a dress kind of thing, like his, he's got a bow tie at the front, so you can use the yarn as decoration as well. Oh! Hello, Patty. He has oh, a it's a dog. It's a skinny dog. <laughs> it's adorable. Uh, what's the nose? Is it a pom pom? Yeah. And the eyes? I don't want to tell you what they are. Oh, I know what they are. <laughs> I know what they are. They look great, though. Oh, I see you talking, but you you hit the the mute button. I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I can, can hear you now. Yes. Okay. I have a little problem. Okay. I'd like to ask you about because when I was working, I poked a hole in his head. Yeah. But it's in a very noticeable place. I oh, okay. Uh, it's right, right there. Um, I'm going to recommend there's 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 a couple different solutions. The 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 nicest but most challenging solution would be sewing up the hole. Uh, I know you don't sew. Uh, the uh, I, I another. Thought I thought something. I'll give. I'll make it a girl, and it'll uh -huh. have a bow. Well, that was going to be my other suggestion. <laughs> was put a hat or a bow or or a spot. You could put like the maybe the dog has spots, and you could if you've got. I know you like red and white Irish setters. You could take some red. Uh, uh, felt or a material if you've got some and cut some little spots out and then glue them onto your puppet. I think I'll go with the bow. It's, it'll be the easiest. Thank you. Thank you. And and I saw someone else just turned their camera on. Hello. How is it going there? I thought that might be you guys. Yeah. Oh, you you muted. Uh, with um, Zoom, you. sometimes if you bump the space bar, it mutes you. 
because the host muted me. My sister left, so don't tell her, but um, I'm using a mini sock and I'm making like a cow or something. This is what I have so far. Oh, I love this stripe. I don't know what it is, but it's got a butt. <laughs> <laughs> Not on purpose. Can I have the camera's on? Do you want to show what you have? I don't want to lift your feet. Oh, nice. What's the red? Uh, it's a camera. It's holding a camera. Oh, that's so cute. And and that actually, that there's the shape. It kind of looks like the arms or like a yeah. pocket. It's going to be a frog. Oh, nice. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. 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 No. Anyway. These are the only small There, there you go. Yeah. They look fabulous. I liked the I liked the hat, and then the little sort of uh, wiggly. Uh, what would you call that? The the, the 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 shape of the hat once you put it on looks fabulous. Uh, we've got uh, Sherry's going to show off uh, what they're working on. Unmute camera. Good morning. Good morning. We have a dog with little ears and you wow. reminded me I bought a whole pack of those stick on spongy papers so for now those are the eyes I it look I, I are, are is it uh, sorry is it one eye open and one eye winking yes ma'am oh. it is I just saw some <laughs> Mary from Alabama sent the Farfel commercial and the dog at the end winks and well, maybe it doesn't wink, but I always imagine him winking. So I was thinking about that. Oh, and I have you. leftover yarn for some of the uh, the collar. And I would normally make big ears, but I figure, well, this is real easy. <laughs> so. And that's just that the sock pulled into little balls and then tied, right. right? Yeah, I have a little filler. I have a lot of filler. Um, <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, and then I the nose. What's the that? Schnau I love the big schnoz. Well, I, I knew that immediately, that that's how I wanted to do it, I realized. And then the nose holes are duct tape. The nostrils are just duct tape. Duct tape, nice. For now, yeah. So that's what I've done. Thank you. I love this. And, you know, as much as people do puppets or whatever, it's always great for the energy and the stimulation and the creative ideas. So thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Puppets are about life. Like it isn't it isn't always just something that's going to sit somewhere. It's something that wants to tell a story. Yeah. So there's always good energy. Hello, Mary. I am not a puppet maker, but you are stepping me through these basic steps so well, I'm actually crafting something. Oh, oh, and it's very Christmassy. I love the yes. snowman. I had these Christmas socks that I, I knew eventually was going to become something. Um, but the snowman is at the top, and if you turn it around to make a puppet, he's upside down. Yeah. So I cut the sock into several segments. That was a brilliant way to, to handle that problem. And I've just hot glued the layers. So we've got length, uh, but we've got the snowman showing. And that's really cool. And I'm working on what I'm gonna do for the face. Gotta come up with some eyes and stuff. Love the idea of twisting the pipe cleaners together, brilliant. And um, I'm gonna do some hands on it too. So that's where I'm at right now. This is so much fun. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for coming. This is great. I love to see, um, and especially from people who uh, haven't necessarily made a puppet before, because, uh, you know, in a nice simple puppet, like, like sock is such a wonderful material because it's got a little bit of stretch, but then like there's the colors and you can get socks with pictures on them. And, and you know, and if, there, if there's a hole in it, it's okay. You can cover the hole, hole with a bow. Uh, you know, there's so much that you can do and everyone will be different. And if you even try to make 
the same one a second time, it'll probably be a little bit different. So, so I'm I'm just going to show where I'm at with my, my with my arms. So there's there's my uh, my deer's arms. He's obviously going to be sort of an anthrop anthropomorphic deer. He's going to be standing in in a bit of an upright position. He or she, I don't know yet. Uh, but I've I've glued, I've I've cut the corners off, and there's white under the gray. So that's the top is gray, the bottom is white, and you can see here's the fold, and I've glued it. So I haven't glued this side yet. There's what it looks like before it's glued. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue in there, trim those little corners. I'll, I'll trim the corners before I put the glue. And then I just fold that together, and then those arms are attached on there. And then I'm going to decide if I'm going to put pipe cleaner in the arm. I think I really like the way this guy has posable arms, so I'm thinking I'm going to do the same thing with this, where I'm going to put some pipe cleaner in his arms too. But, I don't know. I also like how this one's arms are very, very flexible, so I might leave it like that. I'm going to think about it as I glue it. I like to call this the evolution of the puppet, because we start with the primordial sock. You know, this is just a primordial blob from ancient history. And then it evolves up into a character. <laughs> and the evolution may be fast, if you're someone who works very fast. Uh, the evolution may be very slow. If you want to stop and think about things very carefully before you do things. Uh, all of my little fabric scraps, that's a little tiny fabric scrap, I actually save these because I use them for stuffing. So I've got a... a to ding. Ignore that. That was my computer dinging for no reason. Uh, I have a little jar and I save all those fabric scraps to be stuffing in the jar. Which is there. Oh, and I see Lori's got a creature. <laughs> I love the big, is another pom-pom nose? Yes. Oh, and I like the lips. Thank you. <laughs> I've had fun, Robin. Thanks. Oh, and, and Lori's got uh, fun fur uh, as, as, the, as the hair there. That's another option is if you've got uh, what I call borg or what people call faux fur or fun fur or even like, uh, I don't know, the old pom-pom off a moccasin or, or, or a pom-pom off of like one of those fur pom-poms that you can buy in the store. I think the dollar store sells them now. Uh, you can use any of that as well uh, to make hair. Uh, or noses or details. <laughs> hmm. I don't know. Here, let's let's have a have a group consensus. Um, in the chat, I I haven't I'm having a little trouble deciding whether I want to keep the arms loose and and put sticks on them and then like perform them loose or if I want to put a pipe cleaner in there and have it wired. So I'm going to let the group decide if everyone could vote in the chat and just say uh, pipe cleaner or loose. So loose is no pipe cleaner. Pipe cleaner is I'll put a pipe cleaning like this and what I'll do is I'll glue it in there and fold on there. Oh, loosey goosey. I see loose. All right, so I kind of like that. So, and it's kind of fun to be able to like manipulate the puppet and have this this extra flexibility. You still have some flexibility with the pipe cleaner. Like I could still put uh, rods onto the pipe cleaner hands and and have them work as well. But uh, but there's something about just sort of having them flexible. All right, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with loose, but I think I'm gonna do something on the hoops. So I might glue maybe a color or something. Oh, and I was gonna I was gonna do a wider neck. This actually inspired me a bit. I've got uh, I've got uh, some wider felt, so I'm gonna put a little collar to make this guy a little more festive.
Now, I haven't put my faces on my characters yet, so that is perhaps the next thing I'm going to do. And I could um, cut out pieces and glue them on, or I've got my markers, and I could draw things on. I want to do a combination of gluing and drawing. I could also sew things. I, I actually, I brought my sewing kit. There's, this is my sewing kit. But, uh, I don't feel like sewing this morning. that in my scrap. Put the uh, collar. I'm just putting the collar right over the pipe cleaner. The pipe cleaner is nice, but uh, the collar, that's that's a bit a bit showier. And I'm just going to do a little dot of blue at the back. Um, when I'm putting small things together with the hot glue, I did say I was going to talk about hot glue safety a little bit. I will just dab it with my finger until the glue is cooled a little bit, and then I will press it. That way I'm not burning my finger if any of the glue squishes out the edges. I didn't put enough glue on there that, that any of it squished out the edges. So just always be cautious with your glue. Now let's see, I'm going to go red and blue, so I need a red pipe cleaner. I'm going to put this aside, I'm going to come back to this. This is another previously loved pipe cleaner that was something once upon a time in a, in a class. And I'm going to put bells on it. I'm going to, I've got, I've got my jar of bells here and I'm going to put some, some bells around it and then I'm going to put them around the collar like that. So I have a green and red holiday collar. Uh, let's see. So I was going to do the hoops. What colors have I got? Black hoops. I could do festive red hoops or I could do green hoops. Oh, mittens! I could make the reindeer wearing mittens. Oh, we've got uh, Patty showing off, uh, showing off the bow. Look at that. Oh, and you are muted, but I see your lips are moving. That is very festive, and I like it with the, the neck, uh, the neck part. Oh! <laughs> are you gluing the bow on or tying it on? Still can't hear you, unfortunately. There we go. Uh, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, oops, oh shoot, <laughs> there's so much glue on her, on this poor little puppy's head. Yeah, uh, it took me a really long time to get my glue out. You said glue oh. is a challenge? Yeah. yeah. Are you using hot glue or white glue? White glue. White glue, okay, so you will need to position that so that the glue, the bow won't, won't fall off, and then it's probably going to have to dry like overnight. So that can be the last part that you worry about. It's a very sad puppy. She's cute, but she's sad. Well, I think she looks, well, you could draw a smile on it. I could, I could give her a smile. Yeah, thanks for the idea. I don't know, though, I, I kind of like the expression. Maybe this is, this, this, this particular puppet is waiting for Christmas. And yeah. maybe there's a present under the tree, and they're very excited about the present, but nobody in the family has said that they can open it yet. So they're a little sad because they want to open the present right away, but they, maybe, it's, maybe it's all about the anticipation. See, there's a story there somewhere. She's also sad because she has glue in her eye now. I have to go first. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you for your help. This is, this is brilliant. Yes. If it's white glue, it will dry clear. Oh. And actually, here's a little tip. This is for everyone. If you are using felt or fabric, you can actually put glue on the fabric to stiffen it. So you oh. might want to put glue over the eye, like intentionally put some glue over the eyes and it'll make them sparkle a little more. It'll give them a little bit of shine. 
Oh. Uh, let's see if okay. I can find Thank you. characters. This Thank character you here. This character here has glue that I saturated the felt with for the fingers. So this felt has no glue in it and it's very flexible. But this felt, actually what I did was I put a layer of plastic down and then I cut out the hands and I dipped them in the glue, set them on the plastic so that they wouldn't get, like don't set them on paper because they will get glued to whatever you set them on. But if you put them on tin foil or plastic, like the saran wrap plastic, you can then peel the felt off of the plastic. You do have to leave it sit overnight. So this is this is for a future puppet. But uh, you can saturate the fabric with glue and it stiffens. It's like starch. It's like putting starch in something. I see a red nose. Is that a recommendation for my deer? This could be Rudolph. Yeah, I hadn't decided if this was going to be a particular character or not. All right, I have decided that this reindeer is going to be wearing mittens. So I need to cut out two mittens. And actually what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut out four mittens so that I can have the top of the hand and the bottom of the hand on one side and the top of the hand and the bottom of the hand on the other side. And then I'm gonna glue the stick in the middle. So four mittens. And how I'm going to do that, I'm going to fold my fabric together, and then I've got two matching mittens. Uh, technically, a reindeer would not have a thumb, but that's okay. This is, this is a fantasy creature. I can do whatever I like with it. Wahahaha. That's my not very evil laugh. There, I just made a small thumb. So there's one pair of mittens, left left top and bottom side of the mitten. So those that'll get glued together on one side. And now I have to cut a matching one. If 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 I had good enough scissors, these are not my good sewing scissors. These are my not good sewing scissors. If I had my good sewing scissors here, I could fold this into four pieces and then cut all four pieces of mittens at the same time. But that's okay. Sort of eyeballing it. Um. Alex, I'm just thinking about that hood idea, and I'm totally gonna have to do that the next time that I make one. I'm gonna make a, a hood for it. And this is the thing, you can get more sock and you can make more things. So like you could do the cast of characters for a story. So if you did a little Red Riding Hood, you could have a red sock and do that hood technique with the sock to show little Red Riding Hood and her Red Riding Hood. Let's see if they're about the same. So they're pretty close to being the same. This, this thumb is a little smaller. So this thumb a little bit smaller. But I like Symmetry, but symmetry is not required. And I'm going to take my little fluffy bits and throw them in my little pot of fluffy bits. Come stuffing. If you save all your fluffy bits, in no time you will have enough material to stuff a toy. And now I'm going to sandwich these on. So I have to decide if the thumb is going to go that way. So I've got, I've got the arm out and the thumb pointing forward. So when I bring the, the arm this way, or I could go this way. So now I've got the arm out with the thumb pointing backwards and the arm will go this way. Hmm. Forwards. Or backwards. No. Actually, yeah, I'm going to do it that way so that when the arm holds the child down, the thumb is forward. Yeah. Okay. 
So this is a thing I'll recommend. This is kind of an obvious thing, but might as well say it out loud because I was literally just doing it. Uh, before you glue things together, hold them together with your fingers just to make sure you're happy with that. Then glue. If you're, as I said, if you're sewing, you can sew it on and then unsew it uh, and move it and change it. But if you're gluing it, you want to get it in the right place. If you're not sure you'll remember how you had that, markers are very handy. And what I'll do is I might put a little dot right where the edge of the glue line is going to be. And that little dot will help me see where to glue it rather than relying on my memory to know exactly. I could also take the two arms, put them together, put a dot on each side equally, and then when I glue the hands on, they'll be at the right uh, equal length. That's if symmetry is very important to you. Uh, do not worry about it if symmetry is not that important to you. Uh, for the eyeballs, I'm also going to do it where I'm going to put a little dot, even if I'm gluing the eyes on, I might put a little dot, dot, just to see where I like the placement of the eyes, and then glue onto those dots. And that way I don't have like one eye here and one eye here. Unless that's my intention. I will always add that like that the rules, there are none. Because the, 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 the main rule, I guess, is just to have fun and get silly with. Had decided that so I am going to just put a little line of glue just right at the edge. You also want to sort of play with the arms and wiggle them around a bit to check for the length of them uh, because if the arms are too long they they're a little awkward to use Ooh, I just had an idea. Tentacle monster. Future puppet. I will make a hooded creature and I will make a tentacle creature. So now I'm going to glue the stick in. So I'm going to take my, uh, my little shish kebab sticks. I am going to cut the pointy ends off. I'm going to do that down towards I'm just going to do them both at once, but I'm going to do it down towards the table so that they don't go far out. Maybe I'll do one at I don't want the sticks flying across the room. And I will step on them and get a sliver later. Yep. Those little pointy bits of wood are going to go. Nice little garbage can over there. I don't know what's going on outside, but there's a crow being really talking to me. The camera is probably not. Blue on the stick. Nope, something in there. And now, glue the other half of the mitten off. Now, here is a trick for hot glue. Uh, I don't want to get glue onto my fingers as I'm gluing this, and it's a very small item. One thing I can do is glue half of it because it's flexible. Put that down, put that first half down, and then come back, open up the part that isn't glued yet, and glue that half. That is what I would recommend with fabric. Don't try to glue it all at once. Just glue a section, lay it, glue another section, lay it, glue another section. That is my recommendation for hot glue. For white glue or, or liquid glue, you know what, just glue the whole thing. It doesn't matter if you get glue on your fingers, you can wash your fingers off. So, so in that case, you wanna glue the whole thing and then set it somewhere where it's not going to slide. Make sure gravity is on your side when you do this and, and set it aside and leave it for, you know, at least a period of time. I say overnight because I'm over cautious. It doesn't need to be overnight, it doesn't. Uh, you know what, if you're really, if, if this is just a decorative puppet, you could also make like a little roll of tape and just tape the pieces together. Uh, you know, uh, you could staple the pieces together. I mean, you know, this, there's lots of ways to affix things. Another way to, whoops, uh, to use the glue is to pinch the back of the fabric. You can see it's wrinkling a bit. To pinch the back, 
put the glue on, put it together, and then smooth it out. And then the third way I'm going to show, so, so the first way was glue a portion, fold it up, and then glue portions until the whole surface is glued. In a big surface, you definitely want to do only a section at a time because the hot, if you try to do hot glue a large section, the hot glue will dry before you get the pieces together. So glue small sections at a time and, and with fabric, you can fold the fabric up, put the glue on and then fold it and then put more glue on and then fold it and do that until it's completed. So that's one. Fold it, fold the fabric through a section at a time. Two, pinch the fabric, put it on and smooth out the pinching spot. Technique three, masking tapes. This is really good for Google Eyes. I don't know if anybody is using Google Eyes, but you take a piece of masking tape, you stick it to the back of the item that you are going to glue, and then you have all of this lovely tape to hold on to. I'm not even touching the item that I'm going to glue. So my fingers are safe. Uh, you can do very tiny things, like if you were gluing sequins, you could, you could put a sequin pick it up with the masking tape, put the glue on and stick it, and then let it dry a little bit before pulling the glue off. Otherwise the sequin will, if the glue is not dry enough, it'll, you'll just pull the sequin off again. Uh, the glue will dry uh, tighter than the masking tape, so you will be able to pull the masking tape off. Unless you're buying like crazy gorilla masking tape that is you know, I don't know. I don't know if such a thing exists. I know Gorilla Glue is supposed to be. Good. So I've just, I've put my hot glue on there. I am lining things up. So, I you can see that okay. I am packing it down into place. Oh, I see we've got the dog again. And, and Patty, you'll have to unmute. Yes, I have another question. Okay. Um, and I'm not quite sure, so I've, I've got my bow covering the hole in, in the poor little puppy's head. But right here, I don't know if you can see, between the eyes, there's there's quite a ridge, and I'd sort of like to flatten it out, but I don't know how to do that. Um, the best, my best recommendation is just to sort of, uh, like a little facelift, so to pull, it'll it'll make the, the eyes go a little wider apart, but just pull the, the soft. The eyes are, are on pins, right? Yes, the eyes are, are pins. Are they, glued on or are they oh, you take pin. the eyes off and then pull the wrinkle out yeah they're they're just pins so i've been trying to i've been trying to flatten it but it, it just oh, okay so is it the material that is under the face no there's nothing underneath that ridge so i'm not too sure why it's doing what it's doing is I'm it a fit. wrinkle in the sock or is it the yeah. shape of the, of it, the oh it's okay. a wrinkle in the sock that came about as i was gluing things on Okay, so uh, did you say the eyes, are you able to take the eyes off? I may never get them back on. <laughs> you might need to take the eyes off, really pull that sock left and right to yeah. pull that wrinkle out. Okay. Um, okay, I'll try that. I'll try that and see if I can do it. I mean, I think our eyes are a little bit too close together. But oh, I, I, then, yeah. Well, you might, you might be able to just pull it with the eyes attached. Okay. But if they're pinned into the material underneath, they may resist. And, and um, I have another question about yeah. something else. Um, like glue. I'm just uh -huh. using white glue. Yep. And uh, it had all gone hard on the top. So what I did was I cut it. I cut the yep. bottle. Um, how, how can I keep this? There's uh, a lot of glue in here. Tin foil. Tin foil. Yeah, just wrap tin foil around the top of it. The, the, I cut it. Whoops. Oh, where did you cut I it? I cut, cut it right here. There's a, I oh, know, I see. Be. Okay. I, I couldn't um, get anything out the top. It was, and the pliers didn't work. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm still going to recommend tinfoil. So, so wrap the tinfoil around it. Maybe okay. put a little extra tape around that to make sure it stays in place. Okay. When you need glue again, you will have to pull all the tinfoil off. Okay. And then put fresh tinfoil on each okay. time. Thanks. I figured you were the expert. I needed Just to ask the, that. The other option would be saran wrap. You could also saran wrap around it. 
I thought oh. you meant the top was you cut the, no, top. the, the top. But I, yeah, it, it, it's it's jammed. I, I pulled part of it off, but the rest of it is just jammed. And I thought, well, I'm not going to waste all this big glue, so I just. Oh uh, well, another option would be pour all that glue into a jar, and then seal it with the jar, and just have a new glue container. Um, so that so you've got options. The easiest option would be tin foil or saran wrap. Perfect. Okay. Just make Thank sure that it's it's airtight. Okay. Thank you very much. I really should I try getting the air out of what's in here already? No, don't worry about that. Yeah. Okay. Any Thank you very much. You, I knew you. I knew you'd have a solution. Thank you. Any any glue container will have air in it. So okay. there's there's my glue. You can see the air up in the top of it. Right. That's not enough air to make all that glue hard. But that's okay. why sometimes when you've only got this much glue left in your container, it's kind of a lost cause because then there's enough air in there to dry out that little bit of glue left. Yeah, I've got about the same amount you have, but the, the whole top part of it is pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. Okay. so just wrap it and just make sure that it's... Um, tight. Good. Tight, yeah. yeah. Thank so, you. You are so the tin, expert. Tin foil or saran wrap, and then if you're worried about the, 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 the material sliding, add a little tape and just tape the edges of it so that it stays in place. Great, thank you so much. So that little bit of ding, ding, that's because my email program is still open. So now I am gluing, I've, I've glued the rod into the one hand and it's just, it's like a little sandwich. So the rod is just in the middle of the mitten there. And so he's got like, oh, he's, his arm is just long enough to, to boop his own nose. And, and a little bit puppet etiquette, a little bit of a puppet etiquette, and I usually mention this uh, towards the ends of any classes, once things start to get more rods and faces and uh, boopability. Um, this is very important if you are playing with a puppet. This is particularly important if you have siblings or other people that you are playing with with your puppets. Be gentle to the other people. The puppet should never be in anybody's face if they don't want it there. They should never be um, touching people's faces if that person has not specifically told the puppet or the puppeteer that that is permitted. Ask for consent before puppeteering in anybody's face. Um, so yeah, I always... Uh, uh, I always like to mention that because I have performed many times in front of small people who think it's okay to stick their fingers in the puppet's mouth or to pull on the puppet's ears. And just like the performer doesn't want the audience mauling their puppet, the puppet should not be mauling their audience. So, so always be respectful and polite in the activities and performance of your puppet and demand from the audience too that they are respectful of the performance and activities of the puppet. I know that sounds a little uh, buddy-duddy, but uh, I don't know. I think it's I think it's important. Even though it's an inanimate object, we still need to have some respect for what we do with that. I'm just tapping the glue on until it's dry enough. And now it won't burn me, so now I can squish it. Oh, and I glued it to my table, but that's okay. This is a plastic workstation and I can just pull it off. I do recommend, I don't think I mentioned this before, have a workspace that you can uh, that you can get a little bit messy. And the glue, I am literally going to drop it on the floor because I, I vacuum this area of floor fairly regularly. Those scissors, these scissors. So that's the start of that. So I definitely need to do faces on these guys. How are we doing for time? Oh, we are we are getting towards the end of our of our puppet making marathon. It wasn't quite a marathon, was it? But we're getting towards the end of it. We will have a, a big grouping of puppets. This will be very nice. I'm going to use that same piece of tape again to glue the paw and the mitten on the other side.
you get little spider webs of glue. Oops, a bit of an angle. Uh, you get little spider webs of glue when you are using hot glue. And one of the ways to get rid of the spider webs is to put your hand on top of where the spider webs are and roll them into little balls. I could also trim my little mittens. There's a little tiny bit of glue sticking out there, so I'm just going to give that a little trim. Oh, hello. So, if there's glue on it, unfortunately, I don't use it for stuff. Oops. If it's glue on it, I unfortunately I don't use it for stuffing. I only use some um, sort of clean, fun glue materials. There, he's got a little mitten. But definitely needs a face still. And so the hands, I can position the rod so I can I can turn the rods in my hand. I can put the hands together like that. We just think. La 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 la, Christmas carols, la la. Or the best one, fa la 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 la. <laughs> uh, I don't know if that's the best one. But uh, we've got little little hands. And I'm control. I've got the, the, the rod in one hand, and I've got the sticks in the other hand. I'm kind of holding them a little bit like chopsticks. But what I'm doing is I've got them loosely held in these two fingers. And then I can use these fingers to manipulate how I want the ang angles of the hand. And then I can go, oh, let's look over here at my other puppets. Aren't they lovely? And here is a hot glue gun. These guys are very good at pointing at things. I had one class, and, and a little boy in the class showed me. They're very good at blowing kisses. That was a young performer in one of my other classes came up with that. And I particularly like dancing, so I, I go back and forth with the body. And actually, I'm not even moving the hands, and it looks like he's dancing. But then I can also go back and forth with the hands. And when I put it together, he has a really nice dance moves. You can figure out different dance moves. This is a fun one to put the arms out and then just wiggle the body in the middle. That's a fun dance move. Or turn him like that with the arms out. This is a no, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Back and forth. Up and down. So yeah, if, you, if your puppet is finished, you can start teaching it some dance moves. This is a nice one too. Yeah. Modern dance. Okay, I'm going to stop dancing and start to putting more face pieces on. Ding. I've got lots of emails I'll have to respond to. I'm going to fold this in half, and I'm going to make a teardrop shape to make my deer's ears. And I'm going to make some sort of big ears, and then I will decide if I want to trim them down smaller. Scrap some scrap bucket. And it's got it's white on one side and gray on the other side. So I'm gonna do the white on the inside. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a little fold like that to give a very nice shape to the ears. And then I have to decide if the ears are gonna go out to the side or up. So I don't know which way ears. I would need to look at the the ear. I think their ears sort of go up, and then I'll put some pipe cleaner antlers in the middle there, and then I think the nose and two eyes. So I'm going to use a little glue to get that uh, hold in the middle there. Gently squishing it together because it's hot and I don't want to turn myself 
I'll show you this guy's ears. Actually, one of his ears got flattened. He's got very nice little ears. They're the same shape as the deer's ears. There we go. I didn't notice that they were flat. Uh, he's got the same shape as the deer's ears, but there's a slightly different fold there so that one edge, there's a cut, and then one edge is folded over the other edge, and it makes for like a little 3D shape. And you could do that with a circle, or you could do that with a point like this, and you've got a very nice ear shape there. See, it's, like, it's sort of like a little seashell shape. Uh, his little antlers, those are pom-poms. That's just one pom-pom glued onto another pom-pom. Uh, the cat's ears are little triangles, and then I glued, you can sort of see some of the glue, I glued along this edge, and then this edge here, I had glued along this edge as well, but I didn't quite, the ears were sort of leaning out left and right, and I wanted them to be tighter, like pointing up instead of out. And so what I did was I added a little tiny bit of glue on the outside of the ear. You can sort of see it right there. See the shiny bit? That's a little bit of glue that I added. And then I pressed the ear into the glue so that this tip would point, go in front of the white, would point upwards. So instead of having the tip point this way, it now points this way because I've, I've controlled it with the glue. Pardon me, I just dropped the ear on the floor. And I'm going to trim the glue off the ends there. I think I'm going to make mine a regular gear, so I don't think I'm going to do specifically Rudolph. That way I can name the, the gear whatever I like. I'm holding, I'm holding the puppet with my knees. This is something I do a lot. Is I use a bit more of my my body. There. Now, if it's here's a little reindeer trivia. If it's a boy reindeer at Christmas, it won't have antlers because boy reindeers they shed their antlers and the antlers jump off. Uh, fall off. Uh, girl reindeers do still have their antlers around Christmas time. So there's a little bit of reindeer trivia. I, I, put, I put enough glue on one side, but not enough glue on the other side. So I see in the in the chat uh, to jump ahead before we end. What are other upcoming workshops? There are two more workshops for figment today and i'm going to invite one of our uh, figment hosts uh to to either turn their camera on or just turn their mic on whatever they choose and let us know what what's coming up today they might need a minute to unmute Well, unfortunately, we don't have any more uh, uh, puppetry submissions, of course. <laughs> this has been fantastic, Robin. Thank you again. Um, we have two more uh, um, uh, uh, presentations. One with Sean Gray uh, called When Nobody Was Here. And then uh, another one with Adam Quang, uh, which is uh, uh, Sashiko uh, Mending. Uh, no puppetry in particular. <laughs> That's okay, but the other things are fun. I will say I have taken several of the figment things. I did a chainmail one. I <laughs> did a <laughs> sea creatures. I made a sea creature out of uh, paper mache and uh, not paper mache, but like paper and tape. And I'm going to mache it later. Um, <laughs> and what was the third one? I don't even remember what the third one I did because it was like last week. But, uh, but yeah, there have been figment stuff going on all, all week. Unfortunately, today is the last day, so catch these next two. 
uh, but there was music. There was it. Tell us a little bit about what what some of the other things that were, so that people can plan ahead for next year. Well, absolutely. The uh, uh, participants today will be uh, uh, emailed, uh, not spammy emailed, uh, of next year's events, of course. Um, yeah, we had uh, Kingy Carpenter. We had uh, she showed us how to silk screen uh, uh, items. It was like from nothing to final product. She's fantastic. Uh, we had uh, Howard Wong and Dominic uh, Chenier. Um, for uh, help, um, uh, teaching users how to come up with a comic book character and how to make a comic book over the course of uh, two weekends. It was really, really sad that I missed that one. Yeah, that was great. It was, it was a two-day one, and I was working one of the days, so I couldn't do it. Uh -huh. it really sad. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm going to look for that one next year. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so definitely we'll encourage uh, all, uh, our, all our uh, participants to keep an eye out for uh, Figment in uh, all the social media platforms. Uh, Instagram, Figment tends to be our little bit more of a focus for us because everyone seems to like the, uh, the, the Facebook. Um, but yeah, we're out there. And, and I will promote my own stuff too. So Figment, this is the final day of it. But I will have uh, puppet making workshops. Um, I, my focus is more puppetry, but I also do uh, illustration and uh, different things. Uh, but I will be having a puppet making workshop in January. So uh, information, um, nothing is posted yet because we don't have dates yet. I'm aiming at January, but even that is not confirmed yet. That'll be with the Chalking Stories Cafe. So um, yeah, I am terrible at putting information. But uh, Figment, do you have uh, do you have my um, social media connections that you're able to put in the chat? Um, and then I would just follow those things. I do, and most but certainly post I'll post something. those up very shortly here. I'm going to collect them. Thank you. Yeah. You will be much swifter and better at it than, than I would. Particularly because I still want to be making my puppet. So I'm doing How do we sign up for today's video about the Sashiko? Uh, uh, that one, I'm not too sure. I'm going to refer to my co-host, uh, uh, Arun yeah. on that one while I find the other uh, links, Robin. Um, uh, you, are you talking about the Sashiko workshop? Do you want to sign up for that? Yes. Okay, you can actually go to I our I want to find out if I can. Page. Sorry, say that again, please. Oh, I want to find out mm -hmm. if I still can. Yeah, the what Facebook, Figment? Figment what Toronto, to? you just uh, uh, search for Figment Toronto okay. on Facebook. In fact, I will send you the link right now. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah, there'll be an event page for each of the uh, workshops coming up. And uh, if you are on Facebook, uh, you can go to the event pages. But I, I think Aruj is going to put the um, uh, the links in the chat would also be a good idea. And, yes. Uh, yeah, and then you can just you can click on the link. And, and the same way you signed up for this one, you'll have to go to Eventbrite and do the register mm -hmm. and, then, and then come back and join the event. And you can join an event like a minute before it starts but the minute it starts you better already be signed up yes it's actually an hour before the workshop that you can sign after that the um, sign up will close uh, okay, the sure. registration so will sure close yeah. so you can do that right now because that workshop is going to start at seven o'clock at 7 p.m so uh, you uh, you have until 6 p.m. to sign up for this particular workshop. Thank you. Yeah, you got to get in there there early enough. Mm -hmm. I had one where I, I got in like just at in the nick of time, and then I had trouble logging into the event. So I went back to Eventbrite, and it was like tickets are closed, and it's like no 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 I have a ticket I just have to find my ticket and I I found my ticket. But I wasn't properly logged into Eventbrite, so then I had to 
properly log in. Then I it says sold out. It says sold out for that one. Oh, sold out. Okay, don't worry about that. Can you give me your email address and I will um, send the Zoom link to you directly? Yeah. Um, how do you, who do you want me to send it to exactly? Uh, you can send it me. Send that to me through chat. Like you can directly message me. Give okay. Me no, right. That's what I'm saying. Through Figment Toronto. Would that be what you want me to send it to? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I emailed everybody today in the morning. There you we can go. actually reply to okay. that email, Here and I will go. make sure. Here we go. Thank you. No problem. Let's do this. Well, we are at the end of our uh, of our session, so I think I'm just going to glue my eyes on really quick. This is this is I talk so much I I don't always finish my topic, so I'm going to hang out like in my living room a little longer and. Uh, so I did, I did uh, purple teardrop shapes, and now I'm going to put black pupils. Mayhaps, uh, Robin, we've got Mary here. I seem to, <laughs> I'd love to see what she's done, if that's okay with you. I would like to see what Fantastic. everybody's done. Fantastic. So, yeah. Let's see. So I used the technique of making an ear got a rudimentary ear on one side. This hat is made out of bits and bobbits left over from the sock. Little piece of felt for a hand and uh, my arms are way too long, but I used my other sock on my arms. So he is probably the tallest Christmas puppet ever. But this was quite fun. I used some beads uh, to just glue on there for the eyes. Um, I used a great big red bead for the mouth and it looked too weird so I popped it off and there was leftover glue. So I used the magic marker on that and stuck a little red bead in the middle and voila! We are kind of Frenchy, I think. I like, I love the hat. He's, he's, he's a little dapper, you know, he's got, he's got a little, little, uh, little cocky hat there. You are very correct, sir, madame. And, and you've got a comment from the uh, from the thing. Uh, that's brilliant. Love the long sock. Yeah. <laughs> it just keeps on going. <laughs> that actually that would be kind of a fun display too to have it like on display somewhere with all that big long uh -huh. sock. Uh, mm -hmm. You can get really great uh, paper towel holders from the dollar store, and those make brilliant puppet stamps. I use those a lot. Does anyone else want to show off the puppets that they've made? My deer has no antlers yet, but I think I'm gonna give them some. Oh, we've got, uh, we've got everybody coming up there. There's Lori's. Oh, I love the, the wrist. And there's a little bling on the on the bow too. Fancy. Thank, thank you, Robin. That was fun. Yay. And Patty? Yep. Uh, I think she's as much done as I can make her. But I wanted to show you under her eye. There's a little drip of white glue. It looks like she's having a little tear. Aww. She's a sad puppy. She's a sad puppy because she <laughs> don't know why. I, 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 like, I, like, I like the story of like, nobody will let me open my present yet. No. But, uh, but maybe there's more to the story. Maybe they didn't get what they, maybe they did open their present and it wasn't what they wanted. No, not yet. Not yet. She hasn't opened her presents yet. I'm sure okay. she's going to get a bone. Yes. Thank you for all your information and help. I really, really appreciate that and enjoyed it. Thank Yay. you. I want to see everybody's. Are, is anyone, we could go to gallery view and could everyone who is willing to turn your camera on, you don't have to say anything, but could everyone who's willing to turn your camera on uh, bring up 
your puppets. And I'm going to, if, if you're okay waiting for a second, I'm going to hide all the non-cameras and I'm going to take a group photo of everybody. So that's just going to take me a minute to go to camera settings and I'm going to hide the non-camera participants. There we go, not there. And now, everyone hold up your puppets and you can either be in the shot or out of the shot as you like. And I'm literally just going to use my camera and take a picture of my screen because I don't know how to do a screen grab. But Figment, if you guys want to do a, uh, a screen, if you're able to do a screen grab of this, get everybody in there without getting my camera in there. And say, socks! <laughs> and everybody look into your um, look into your wherever your webcam is and whoop come on camera focus there we go there fantastic big creation photo yay Puppets are made. Oh, this is amazing. Would you share that photo with her? I will share the photo Could with you. Could you share that photo at some point with her? Yes, yeah. I will share the photo with Sigmund. And if anyone wants to take pictures, and this includes people who are not on camera, if anybody wants to take photos of your of your puppet, either now or when it's finished, because mine's not finished yet, um, please take a picture and then you can post it uh, if you can go to the uh, the event page on Figment uh, for this, or you can put um, you can send it to Figment. You can email it to Figment. Uh, just send it on to Figment, and then because I would love to see everything. Uh, thank you.